I didn't do something about my life, <laughs> then um, I could ruin it. But there was, a, there was a, quite a lot of controversy last year, beginning of last year, about army recruitment drives and going into socially deprived, economically deprived areas and whether or not this was sort of exploitative. Um, I think sometimes you've got to put it into context, you know, what is exploiting somebody? Is it exploiting somebody to use them as a drug mule or is it exploiting somebody to offer them a career? And, OK, the career may have a very serious um, context to it and, and may have the outcome may, may be not one you may, may appreciate fully, but the fact is you at least are going to have a career and you're going to have the opportunity to improve yourself, whereas if you stay in a certain area and a certain lifestyle, you've got no chance. The only way is down. And people have to sort of keep things in proportion. I think we, we've hit a time in our society you now where everybody takes things totally out of proportion. You say one thing and it's taken as another thing. You do something and people see it as a threat. Um, you know, you, you can be sued now, uh, I mean, or, or I'm led to believe, if you're a nurse and you're doing your degree uh, or you've qualified and you're driving along and there's a car accident and you don't stop, you can be, you can be discharged for that. But if you do stop and something happens and the person dies because of something you tried to do, you have no insurance cover by the medical authorities. So, you know, it's like, you know... Damned if you do, damned no. if you don't. Exactly. So, you know, we, we're getting things out of proportion. Either we take things in the correct way or we don't, you know, but at least start setting some laws which give us an idea of where we should be going rather than just throwing them out sort of scattered ways. I the thing that the politicians don't know. I think we are at a, a real sort of watershed in history. You can feel it. I mean, right now, the, the Gordon Brown, you know, how he's going to solve our financial problems mm -hmm. by... We're massively in debt, so what we'll do is go more in debt and we'll print, spend our way out of it. Like, think, it sounds like a great plan <laughs> until you think, well, what if it goes wrong? And yeah. there was a story yesterday, children, a newborn baby arrives in this country with £18,000 worth of debt. And you think, God, if, if, if Gordon Brown's got this mm. wrong... Well, so well, the politicians mean... are getting it wrong, though, Simon. Where are you? I mean... Can I ask you, the Falklands War, would you have said it's a just war? And I argued on your programme, Matthew, some time ago that the, we should have gone to Iraq. I believe yeah. Blair and his lies. So, Simon, where are you now on our current war with, Af with uh, um, Iraq? With Iraq, I never believed we should go. With Afghanistan, I believed it was just and right. You can't have women being stoned no. to death and the Falklands... for walking and making a noise and being accused of then attracting male attention. Um, women being stopped being doctors, teachers, or even just being educated. Yeah. Um, they blew up some wonderful historic works of art that were yeah. carved into rocks. The things that went on in Afghanistan were totally, totally unacceptable. You could, you could say historically, oh. Afghanistan, I mean, you could ask the Russians, it's an almost unwinnable conflict. Well, we've been it? going back and forth for centuries, yeah. haven't mm. we? Yeah. But, I mean, with Iraq, um, the UN charters we'd signed up to, there was not a single thing in the UN charters which allowed us to go in under regime change. Well, my point oh. then, Simon, is, is it easier to bear your injuries for a war in the Falklands that was resolved than a, a person in Iraq... How much was an intrusion into... You know, they were British well, citizens. I, well, there yeah, was but, justification, but, but, as, as I saw it, and most of the other guys. The one thing is you, you've got to realise about soldiers whilst they're serving is that they're paid to do a job, not paid to have an opinion. Right. And so what, what I'm saying is, is it, is it then easier to bear your injuries than uh, someone in similar circumstances who's come out of Iraq, which I think generally now people consider was a wrong thing to do? Um, I suspect, yes. I mean, I've spoken to guys who were injured in Iraq, and they find it wholly distasteful. Mm. Um, they're not happy with the situation, but they did their job, and that's what they were paid to do. They couldn't refuse to go because no. that then covers all other manners of crimes. But what what can't help is that there's now so much analysis of mm. the military manoeuvres. Every single incident is reported. I mean, in, in the olden days, all we did was stand on the docks and wave a Union Jack as mm. the soldiers Trust left we and greeted them when they came back. Now we know so much. Everybody's got an opinion on how the war is fought, let alone the cause of it. Yeah, that, that becomes a problem for the guys on the ground because mm. the decision makers, you have to be brave when you make your decisions and you have to be instant when you make them. And there will sometimes be casualties which, to the ordinary eye, would be unacceptable. But when you have terrorists hiding in schools, hiding amongst children, hiding amongst mm. patients, casualties, you know, hiding amongst women in farmhouses, mm. they drop their weapons, they pick up a garden fork, you know, all of a sudden, do you know who you're fighting? Yeah. And they don't wear a uniform, you know, um, and... They hate you. <laughs> they yeah. really and, hate you. But these guys <laughs> will fight to the death, you mm. know. They don't think anything of it. You I mean... 
they believe they're going to the other side to meet 72 virgins as martyrs, you know. I hope they meet one 72-year-old virgin. Just, I, hope they're doing, I, I hope they're doing to meet the one from America who wants two and a half million yeah. pounds for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, great to have you with us. It really is. And uh, great to have you with us as well at home. Let me tell you about today's show. Uh, here's what's happening. Uh, after the ads, we're going to dissect the papers. And...